The answer is in the mind of Mike Leach. We came to Texas to talk football. Instead, we met a man who wanted to do card tricks. <laughs> Coach, I suggest you go out and do what I do. Get out of bed, go outside. We found bones of dinosaurs and everything else, but we haven't found bones that I've heard of, of Bigfoot. Are you gonna swing it like this? Or are you gonna uh, practice uh, precisely and swing it like that? So what, you want, you want a magic trick? I got Geronimo's death certificate. And his walls. Donald Trump. It's always been naive. You know, um, on Earth they say, oh, well, Luke, we're the only ones. We're, I mean, really, why? Have you been to the other planets? <laughs> Almost. We gotta, we gotta add more teams. How many teams? 64. Here's our new recruit right here. Sasquatch says, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Grizzly bears, chimpanzees, sharks. Uh, well, somebody thinks it's a big deal. It's not. Gravitating a little towards uh, Vikings and George Washington. Went through a little bit of a Napoleon phase. Coach, if they made a movie about your life, what would the title be? <clears throat> In the dictionary, the word weird means of strange or extraordinary character, and the man I'm about to talk about in today's video is exactly that. When you think of coaches, what do you think of? You probably think of someone yelling at the players to do their job. You probably think of an old man who has no personality, or some young guy whose playing days have now put him into coaching. But there is no one in the coaching profession that is like Washington State's head coach Mike Leach. You want to know why I love Mike Leach? It's because he's not afraid to be himself. Mike Leach is probably one of the only coaches who when you ask him a question, he will talk until he gives you everything he knows about the subject. Even his players stopped asking him questions because of this. He will speak his mind and he won't hide anything in any interview he does. He walks 3.5 miles to work every day. Leach loves to do magic tricks with cards. He loves when the offense and defensive line go at each other and how intense it is. And Coach Leach is obsessed with pirates, chimpanzees, grizzly bears, and whales. Growing up in Wyoming, he had a lot of adventures as a kid. And he always loved playing cowboys and Indians, and he always wanted to be an Indian. When he first learned about the library on TV, he looked for the biggest book about Indians and got a book about Geronimo. He has watched, read, and learned everything about Geronimo, and then he decided to write his own book about him. Leach at the age of 15 started coaching baseball because he could legally drive, and he had a team all the way until his sophomore year of college, and that's where he began to fall in love with coaching. Leach played football all through high school, but he broke his ankle his senior year, and then he started playing rugby in college at BYU, and he never played college football. After his BYU days, which he flew through in eight semesters because he didn't want to pay more, he then went to law school at Pepperdine, and then he got a degree from the United States Sports Academy. Mike wanted to become a lawyer that sued companies for product liability and thought about coaching part-time. But he pursued his coaching career, and he called Cal Poly for a coaching job, and they hired him for $3,000 to become their assistant offensive line coach. Leach grinded his way up the coaching ladder working as an offensive line coach at Cal Poly, then a linebackers coach at the College of the Desert. He then went on to coach football in Finland for a year before moving on to Iowa Wesleyan as their offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. And this is where he learned the air raid offense. The head coach of that team was Hal Mummy, and him and Leach worked together for the next couple of years creating what Leach called the Air Raid Offense, which was a high-flying, fast-paced aerial assault offense. The Air Raid is honestly like basketball. Everyone on the line is spaced out, and spacing is important, you make quick decisions, and you only have a few specific amount of plays. Leach and Mummy were a great match, and changed the idea of how offenses are run by honestly just running the two-minute offense the entire game. The two of them moved on to Valdosta State and then to Kentucky before Leach decided to move on and accept the offensive coordinator job at Oklahoma under first year head coach Bob Stoops. Stoops was a defensive coach and he loved what Leach did at Kentucky and these two formed something that changed Big 12 football forever. The Big 12 was a smash mouth, power rushing, and ball control league and Leach's offense changed everything about that. After a year at Oklahoma, he had his chance to run his own program in the Big 12 at Texas Tech. Mike Leach was at Texas Tech for 10 seasons, never had a losing season, and they really kept getting better every year. When he took over at Texas Tech, they had one of the worst graduation rates in major college football. Then he made Tech a national name, and they had the highest graduation rate of any public university in major college football. Leach had to coach at a disadvantage, 
if a kid was from that area, they would always want to play at Texas or Oklahoma or Nebraska or even Texas A&M, not Texas Tech. So Leach built his program off the island of misfit toys. He took all the rejects and built a dynasty out of them. He would take all the players that were passed up on, but then he would build them up and implement his system and they would go out there and dominate. The Red Raiders led the NCAA in passing yards for four straight years in a row, and Texas Tech were the comeback kids. But the magical season was the 2008 season. Led by quarterback Graham Harrell and star wide receiver Michael Crabtree, Tech was a perfect 10-0 with a win over number one Texas and one of the craziest finishes in college football history. But Tech then played Oklahoma who had Sam Bradford and were a national championship runner up, but lost to them and then they lost their bowl game versus Ole Miss. But this was one of the most memorable seasons in Tech football's history. But after the season ended, Leach had all sorts of coaching opportunities. He could take the Washington job or the Auburn job. But he decided to stay at Tech for 2009. And after that season, one of the dumbest stories ever surfaced where Mike Leach had mistreated one, you heard me one player, and it caused him to get fired. I'm not going to go in depth on this story because it's really irrelevant and should not be mentioned in the story of Mike Leach, but this story all stems back to a father not being happy with his son's playing time, and they made up an entire story that caused Leach to get fired because he wouldn't apologize even though the entire story was manufactured. But anyway, Leach's time at Tech ended horribly, and he was fired in December of 2009. He then worked on TV, wrote a book, and enjoyed some time off in the Key West. His name was always on the coaching radar. Jobs like Miami, Maryland, and Minnesota Open, and he even interviewed at Maryland twice, but administration passed on him. But finally, Leach found his next job in November of 2011 at Washington State. Athletic director Bill Moose, who is currently at Nebraska and hired Fred Hoiberg and Scott Frost, was not scared to pull the trigger as the new AD at Washington State. Now let's be honest about Washington State. Texas Tech was a bad program and an incredibly hard state to recruit in, but Washington State was honestly one of the worst programs in major college football. Their previous coach in the past four seasons won only four out of 32 conference games, the ticket sales and donations were failing, and the energy about the team was not there. Washington State is a hard school to coach at because it's near the border of Washington and Idaho, and all the great Washington recruits go to Washington, so Leach having success there is honestly a miracle. My favorite thing was Moose called Leach and asked him to sign the memorandum, and Leach was on Splash Mountain at Disney, and he signed it later in that day. So Mike Leach became a cougar, and it took a while to get the ball rolling. They went 3-9 and nine twice, and 6-7 and seven in their first three seasons. But after that, Washington State has not had less than 8 wins, and last year the team went 11-2 with a victory in the Alamo Bowl. The Cougars are 26-10 in conference play over the past four seasons, with four consecutive victories over Oregon and three in a row over Stanford. Leach has been named the Pac-12 Coach of the Year twice, in 2015 and 2018, and the National Coach of the Year in 2018. He has gotten Washington State back onto the national map, and it's not slowing down anytime soon. It was supposed to slow down after last year when graduate transfer Gardner Minshew, who was one of the best quarterbacks in college football, was drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars this year. But new quarterback Anthony Gordon is off to a great start and has the most passing yards in college football currently, and before the season, he had only passed the ball five times in a game at the FBS level. Leach taught a class in the spring semester at Washington State called Leadership Lessons in Insurgent Warfare and Football Strategies, and only 40 students got in and they were asked two questions on the application. Number one was can the British strategy in the Malaya insurgency be used today? And number two is the wishbone of potentially viable offense for the NFL, why or why not? Mike Leach is great at playing the underdog role and knows how to get his players to buy into that. But if he had the great athletes at other schools, it would be scary to know how great his offenses could become. He is unlike any coach because of how he speaks and the way he enforces himself on the team. It's honestly wild how he makes it work. He's just a calm, weird guy, but don't get me wrong, he is intense sometimes. His air raid offense is more of an institution he has built rather than a scheme or strategies and he worries more about how he organizes his practice more than a scheme. He also calls plays because he worked hard learning the offense and wanted to coach it instead of just managing the team and shaking hands. Coach hates selfish people and his favorite quote is you are either coaching or allowing it to happen. Leach has a small playbook and is great at cycling out coaches like the Sabins and Belichicks of the world and gives his coaches a lot of control and prepares them to be a coach. That's why his older players can come right in and succeed like the QB now. The guy who wrote Moneyball, Michael Lewis, says when Leach comes into a program, he sprinkles fairy dust on the QB because they just become a different human being. I also read he makes sure everyone gets the ball and actually asks during halftime if anyone needs to get more touches because he likes confusing the defense and making them not know where the ball is going. A balanced offense to Coach Leach is not running and passing the ball 50-50. 
It's making sure all of your offensive assets are getting a balanced opportunity. The number one thing he always looks for in a quarterback is accuracy, and he thinks you can basically teach them everything except for accuracy. But most importantly before the video ends, I have to talk about his coaching tree and his former players. Former players include current UCF head coach Josh Heupel, who was the quarterback with him at Oklahoma. Current Houston head coach Dana Holgerson played for him at Iowa Wesleyan. Arizona Cardinals and former Texas Tech head coach Cliff Kingsbury played quarterback for Leach at Texas Tech and current Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley played under Leach at Tech and also coached at Tech. There are plenty of other coaches to mention, but these are the big names I wanted to say. Leach is a great coach who developed a great system and the players seem to love him. He might speak his mind a little too much. He might be a little hard to work with, but he gets results and he definitely does things the right way. So I hope you enjoyed everyone. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more stories coming soon. And as OJ Simpson said on Twitter, take care.